Okay guys, so today we are going to extract vithanolite from the ashwagandha, right? The ashwagandha is adaptogenic herb and what it does is that it reduces the cortisol level and that is why it is getting very much famous, right? So these are the chemicals which are responsible for reducing the stress. So what we are going to do today is we are going to extract the steroidal lactones. So what is steroid? This four member ring is going to be steroid, right? And this is your lactone. The steroidal lactones or the vithanolites has solubility in organic solvent. They are insoluble in water, which is very common. Like steroids are not soluble in water. They are of course going to be soluble in ethanol, methanol. But the problem was that I did not have access to the methanol or ethanol, right? So what I need to do is I need to find another solvent which I can have, which I will be able to access it and also it should be able to dissolve the vithanolites, right? So what I did, I fired up the software for solubility prediction in which I found out that the isopropyl alcohol, which is this one, right? CCCO, this is one. So isopropyl alcohol will provide similar solubility compared to the ethanol, right? At the 50 degrees Celsius temperature, this 323 is Kelvin. It is Kelvin, so it is going to be uh, Celsius is going to be 50 degrees Celsius. So I measured around 20 grams of ashwagandha powder. And then I added 50 ml of isopropyl alcohol. The reason why I added only 50 ml right now is so I can shake it properly and then I can add another 100 ml of isopropyl alcohol. Afterwards, I covered it with the plastic wrap and the rubber band and then I transferred it to the water bath. The reason why I am using water bath is because I do not have reflux setup, right? And then I noticed that it is actually bubbling or the pressure is increasing inside the flask while adding the water bath. So I decided I will transfer it to the messenger which I had from the previous my mycology experiment. Therefore, I transferred everything into the another messenger. There was little bit of powder left on the conical flask. So I added another around 10 to 20 ml of isopropyl alcohol to wash them out. If you have access to the methanol and ethanol, then you should use methanol because then you will be not wasting any of your solvent and also you will get as much as possible from the ashwagandha. Now I think there is way too much amount of isopropyl alcohol. Therefore, I decided that I will add another 10 to 20 grams of ashwagandha powder so I don't waste my isopropyl alcohol. I sealed the mason jar and then I transferred it into the water bath again. And on top of the mason jar, I added the cold water. So now our setup is ready. Therefore, I will keep it for 24 hours and every 30 minutes, I will change the water. So temperature remains constant. But rather than water bath, I transferred it into the sunlight so it can maintain the temperature and I don't need to change the water all the time. It's been 24 hours and our extraction is completed. So I started filtering out. I created the funnel using plastic bottle. I cut the plastic bottle in half and used the top as a filter, uh, as a funnel. Filtration was taking very long. It took around 10 to 15 minutes to get last 10 ml because ashwagandha powder was getting accumulated. Why it, I was filtering, I noticed that little bit of ashwagandha powder has been slipped. So I decided I will dry out the current filter paper or sorry, or my napkin and then I will refilter our extract. Therefore, I transferred everything back to the mason jar, used my new napkin for extra as a filter and I refilter it again. This time, there was no visible ashwagandha powder or any kind of visible impurity. So I decided we are good to go.
Now in our processed ashwagandha powder, I added around 200 ml of water. It is tap water, right? It's not distilled, it's just tap water. And then I decided to add little bit of sodium hydroxide, which I wanted to do since the beginning, but I did not do it in the isopropyl alcohol because then I was thinking how I was going to separate the isopropyl alcohol and sodium hydroxide. I will need to neutralize it, so I left, I leave that idea. Now, in our isopropyl alcohol extract, I added around 15 ml of naphtha solution. The reason why I am adding naphtha is to pull out the non-polar compounds which has been dissolved into the isopropyl alcohol. I am doing this so we can have isolation as much as possible and I want to clean our isopropyl alcohol extract. So after the layers has been separated, I transferred our bottom isopropyl alcohol layer into the one container. When I was looking at the naphtha, I saw that there is like a thin layer of fungus and not a fungus, but it looked like a fungus. So it was probably the ashwagandha powder. I decided that let's just separate our isopropyl alcohol where there is no impurity and then I, we are going to do something about that. Now into our naphtha, I added around 50 ml of water. Here I did a mistake, is that I shake it like crazy, right? You should not do it when you are actually doing this at home or you are repeating this process. You just tilt it down. Do not shake it like crazy like I did, right? It's kind of started looking like immersion, so I was worried that it will take very hard time to actually separate the naphtha and water layer. We can actually solve that, we can add the salt and our layer will be separated pretty, pretty quickly, but I decided not to and just leave it as it is. And if the separation has a problem, then I will add the salt, right? So I leave it as it is. Remember I told you that I saw like a thin layer of ashwagandha powder on the naphtha so I removed it into the beaker and it is, this is what it looks like. So in order to remove it I filter everything through the cotton. It took a long time but eventually we filter everything. Then I loaded the funnel again and carefully separated the water and stored it into the one container and I separated naphtha into the another container. So now we have a total of three solutions. One is iso, another is naphtha and another is water. The water one looks cloudy because it contains the naphtha but I decided to not add salt and leave it as it is and transferred all of them into the freezer. So while everything was in fridge, I decided to burn the cotton which was used as a filter. I have no idea why I did it, but at that time it sounded like a plan. So today it's time to get our extracted product. I have decided that we will evaporate the naphtha but I will keep the isopropyl alcohol. I do not want to evaporate my isopropyl alcohol because we already use in excess quantity. 
while evaporating the naphtha everything caught on the fire so we lost our product right but i scraped from wherever naphtha was burning so i scraped from there and we covered this much amount of product which is like really sad i only have not it is not even my fingertip right so we have very less product from the naphtha or you can say we lost everything from the naphtha so now for our isopropyl alcohol i decided that we will make distillation setup right this is diy distillation setup you should not do it at home right because right now isopropyl is not going to affect my plastic pipe so it's fine i decided i created this setup and started my distillation and actually it started working so i was very happy so on the test run we have collected around 20 ml of isopropyl alcohol which i transferred and started our distillation setup again this time i covered around 50 ml i transferred it and then again i started the distillation and i i received around 20 ml and then i decided that i am not going to distill anymore because it was taking very long so i decided let just evaporate our isopropyl alcohol also so in total we received around 90 to 100 ml of isopropyl alcohol and we have left 40 to 50 ml of our isopropyl alcohol extract which is i decided i will just evaporate directly right so i got a dish and i poured the isopropyl alcohol extract and i let it on the sunlight but after it, it was evaporated i noticed that we are going to receive the gooey oil right so i decided i transfer it back to the glass jar and started on the water bath after we received this dark brown oil and i decided i am not going to go further because then i i am feared that we will burn the product so i stored this into the fridge for a week because the next week we are going to further process it